Facet arthrosis, spondylosis, degeneration of the facet joints, inflammation of those facet joints. I have something for you. Welcome. Arthrosis of the facet joints. Arthritis, inflammation, facet syndrome. When you look at the spine, this is the posterior back part of the spine, the lumbar spine having a lumbar lordosis, kyphosis in the thoracic, and a cervical lordosis where it goes inwards in the cervical or neck region. We are concerned about primarily that lower back area where the facet joints sit on each other. Each vertebrae has a facet joint. The one above sits on the one below. You can see as a, as a joint opens up, those are the facet joints opening up in the back part. That is what we're talking about. The discs coming from disc degeneration, as well as the facet joints coming from arthritis, those are the two reasons why we increase that load on these facet joints, affecting the articular cartilage within that facet joint, causing this extra calcium to build up. This is what we call arthritic or osteoarthritic changes. As a result of that, you have very, very high pain-sensitive fibers that when those areas become inflamed and irritated, it becomes very, very painful. It can cause referred pain radiating to the back, into the organs, in the front of the stomach, into the buttocks, down the leg called sciatica. Although, it's very important to understand that even though you have sciatic type pain, even with a herniated disc, it does not necessarily mean it's coming from the disc. Many times it comes from the facet joints. That's why proper evaluation and proper diagnosis is extremely important. One of the best exercises for facet arthrosis or facet hypertrophy and pain as a result of dysfunction is this exercise where we're going to Get on all fours, your hands right below your shoulders, your knees a little bit spread apart. And what we're going to do is we're going to lean our buttocks back as we sit between our legs like this. Okay, as we go down and as we come up. As we go down, as we sit down between our legs and as we come up. This puts all the motion back into the fed set joints. When there's a facet joint that's locked or adhesed or scar tissued, this actually opens up those facet joints. This is a great exercise. You can do 10 to 15 of them per set, a couple sets you could do at a time. You could actually bring your head down if it's a little easier for you. As you look down, you may feel a little more of a stretch as you bring your head down. Excellent stretch, very safe for you. And again, if you have knee problems, this may not be the exercise for you because it may aggravate your knee. But this particular exercise is extremely effective and extremely beneficial. Facet arthrosis can happen in the neck as well. Realize that the head being 12 pounds for every inch we go forward as a result of forward head posture and rounded shoulders, each inch is additional 10 pounds. That can increase the load tremendously, putting excessive wear and tear in these facet joints as well. So with facet arthrosis within the neck area, realize that the facets run on a 45 degree angle. And again, when there's arthritic changes in here, most important is that you can be affecting the nerve root that's coming out of that area. And that can cause pain into the arms, chest, inside the, the shoulder blade, back into the behind the skull, over the head, behind the eyes. And again, it can mimic herniated discs. So just because an MRI, as we said before, shows a positive finding, these facet problems can mimic herniated discs. So it's very important proper diagnosis and diagno diagnosis pertaining to this condition. So we want to make sure we increase mobility. One of the best things is taking the head and pull it down to the right. Hold it about 10-15 seconds. And then you'll turn your chin up to the left and keep pulling. Good. And then you'll come and you'll bring your left hand on your right side of your head, pull down to the left. Okay, lift your chin up to the right side, keep pulling down. And again, what we're doing is we're just trying to put motion back into the neck by freeing up adhesions. And you can stretch on that from 10 seconds to 20 seconds to 30 seconds. But the whole idea of this is to release those, those adhesions. Uh, you can get adhesions in the facet joints 
around the facet joints, make putting motion into the joint. It's extremely effective, particularly by using your own arms rather than just using your head. Facet syndrome is a high epidemic. So many people have this condition and so many of them are misdiagnosed. Do these exercises, become familiar with your condition, and most important, try to live a healthy lifestyle. Take off the weight, exercise, lots of flexibility, hydrate with water, vegetables, fruits, juices, put the healthy stuff in your body to keep your body running in the best fuel possible. If you have questions, leave them below. I ask you to, I ask you to subscribe if you haven't. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.